You hear a lot of this stuff, you know, the number one thing for this or for that. So let's have a crack and see where we go. What is the number one thing for you if you are in your 40s or 50s, maybe even your 60s, for you to be more athletic, be stronger, and live a more what we call anti-fragile lifestyle, particularly for those of us that are getting into their 60s and their 70s and their 80s. Well, first, let's just cover what it is not. It is not another fad diet. No, you do not need to go vegan, nor do you need to intermittently fast, or if you believe life isn't easy, they'll tell you it's intermittent eating to make it sound more palatable. It's also not diving into a never-ending calorie deficit restricting you from the foods that you love the stuff that you enjoy except if it's the processed crappy stuff nor is it barcode scanning every single morsel before it even gets a chance to pass your lips nor is it the never before seen ever ever come up with da 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 groundbreaking new workout program that shreds fat whilst you sleep in 7 14 or 28 days Or is it some workout that involves 27 stations jumping around like a bunny from a cardio machine to a weight to a box jump and just completely smathing yourself? Is it cardio? Is it anti-cardio? And no, you don't have to take up running. Your knees are probably already smashed anyway. You don't need to do that. You don't need to put more stress on the body for the sciatica to flare up. And therefore, you don't need to then jump into the pain meds because that's all you're going to end up taking when you go on this count to 5K. And no, it's not some 90-minute morning routine. Get up at 4 a.m. before the crack of dawn and dawn doesn't like anyone touching a crack in the first place. You don't need to journal your feelings. You don't need to list the stuff that you're grateful for. And you don't need to get up at 4 a.m. just to fit the shit in before your normal day gets started. Now we've settled on what it isn't. Let's cover some of the typical things that most people think will work. As I said, they take up running. Yeah, that's cool. Some people do just cardio only. So maybe it's not running, but if they get on the cardio machine, you know, they're not necessarily a treadmill, but they might jump on the cross trainer. And then as we said before in that intro, it's the crash dieting, it's the skinny tea, it's the this, this, that, it's the pescatarian, it's the light and easy, it's the 28 day, it's the total 800 well-being diet that some guys come up with when the reality is 800 calories in a day isn't even enough for a 12 year old girl to fully function. So what's the problem with all of these approaches? Well, at first, especially if you've been inactive, you've been sedentary, then, yeah, maybe you're going to lose a little bit of weight because you're coming off the sidelines and getting into the activity. Along with all these new aches and pains, the joints and the bits and pieces, the running for weight loss or all of this is actually counterproductive to some long-term results. First of all, let's make this clear. Running is a skill that has to be mastered. 70% of recreational runners get injured in the first 12 months and they don't go back. From IT band syndrome, tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, stress fractures, hamstring, calf injuries, you name it. Think about this. When you run, it's anywhere from one and a half to three and a half times extra force on your body from the carcass that you already have it's not enjoyable i mean please go outside have a look at the people running who's smiling who is smiling no one they're running and it doesn't look like fun now the thing is is how many runners do you see go out there and push the limits you know the counts to 5k well they've never even walked 5k and yet they're going to go out and run the 5k the return is diminishing And it diminishes pretty quickly. The effect being that we end up doing a few things, one of which is we lose muscle. If we are just going to run, and therefore we also are not going to eat, we're going to lose the muscle. Muscle is a longevity tissue, people. Please understand that. You need it. You don't have muscle if you get older. You are just a bag of bones. Cardio only and crash dieting has the same effect. 
the body will quickly adjust. Your metabolism's a smart little bugger. It'll go, right, I've got less activity. I need to do something. I need to pair it back. And therefore, what happens after a while is when you're crash dieting or you're just going into the cardio cycle, you are not, A, number one, eating enough for your body to survive, and your metabolism will slow down accordingly. You need that sucker to get a kickstart. So even the dogs think so. You should talk about getting strong, and that's where we come in. We build muscle. Muscle is good for general fitness. It is good for your well-being. It is good for healthy metabolism. End of story. It is not rocket science, people. It is pretty straightforward. Increasing your muscle mass will help you counteract the effects of sarcopenia. Fancy word for muscle loss. Muscle wasting due to age. It also helps with bone density. It helps with your strength. It reduces the risk of fractures. The old slip, trip, oh shit, break a hip. Joint flexibility. All of these things. Arthritis. You name it will all come as a result of you. Number one, getting stronger and minimizing these effects. Increasing the muscle mass has a positive effect, as we said, on your metabolism. It is metabolically more demanding. Your body will have to feed that sucker as you put it on. And therefore, preferentially, that's where your calories will go. Apart from the fact that most of your calories go to feeding the one muscle that you really don't strength train, and that is your brain. By emphasizing strength, we will do a few other things. We'll look at muscle hypertrophy, getting bigger muscles. We can look at muscle endurance. Okay, repeating the same thing over and over again for longer periods of time. We can talk about full body conditioning. So it's not just the jacked and tan guy who's all big upstairs and has got chicken twigs for the legs. And it's also not the guy who was lower body dominant, big ass quads, tight ass booty and skinny pecs and no forearms. We don't want the combination that is Brutus, Olive Oil and Popeye M1. We're going to pick one or two and we're going to go. We'll start to look at muscular strength, that ability to pick ourselves up the floor when we fall over. We're going to look at things like explosive power. Yes, this is not just the domain of the kids. This is for us oldies as we get older. Now, there are a few different ways that we can do this. What we call modalities, fancy word for different things. We can do body weight training. Most of you won't do that because trust me, when you get into a good bodyweight training course, you are taxed, you are naffed up. So you'll go and pick on your weights. You will do your free weights. I prefer dumbbells and kettlebells rather than a barbell, just me personally. You could do bands. You could even just do a skipping rope. You can go to the machine section of your local gym or you can do what they call it functional workouts. Now that in itself has become such a muddy area, but you get what I mean. You know, lift, shift, move weight, run, jump, bend, squat, twist, lunge, gait, do whatever, all the different movement patterns. Now, scientifically, ah, that's where we get caught. What are these benefits? Well, first of all, it will make you stronger. Putting on a bit of muscle mass, working on strength will make you stronger. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay, it will help you more efficiently consume the calories that your body is getting in, right? It goes into breaking down. It goes into what we call muscle syn- uh, sorry, protein synthesis. Right? You also do things like what we call the post-workout or epoch, fancy term, for you burn that stuff up to 72 hours afterwards. We can reduce that visceral fat, the stuff that you can't visibly see, the excess stuff, the appearance of being lean. You suddenly get leaner the more that you do this. The reduce the risk of the falls, as we said, no more slip, trip, and break a hip. We can lower the risk of injury, i.e. we can actually move better, plane of motion, get up and down mobility, flexibility, all of that stuff in together. You can also retrieve your ticker, your heart health, blood pressure, cholesterol, blood circulation, all of those types of things, blood sugar management, mobility, flexibility, and the one that Ryan Warren really, really talks about is your self-esteem. You know it. When you are stronger and you look better, you have that confidence. You can walk into any goddamn room and people will notice you. You will not be meek and mild. You will not sleek in. 
and be the unnoticeable person in the room. People will see you. They will comment. They will go, shit, mate, what have you been doing? And all you have to say to them is one thing. I didn't diet. I didn't look at numbers on a scale. I focused on getting strong. I focused on getting strong for me, not for you, not for anyone's validation, but for me. I focused on getting strong because I want to live longer and live stronger. Now, my rant aside, if any of this resonates with you, come and have a chat. My name is Dom McStraw. I call myself a performance and conditioning coach. Call it what you will, personal trainer. Sounds fancy, but at the end of the day, here's the deal. In my early 30s, you know, usual thing, careers took off, focus there. Kids come along late 30s, early 40s, focusing on doing everything within my power to bring in the bacon. Do this, do that, and I didn't do jack shit for me. And then one, two, skip a few, medical emergencies aside, I come down like a ton of bricks. The reality is this. If I cannot put myself first and focus on me and get myself better, fitter, faster, stronger, whatever that shall be for you, for me it's this, how the hell am I supposed to serve the two kids? How the hell am I supposed to serve the wife, the partner, the family, the friend, the neighbor? How can I serve anyone if I can't bloody well serve myself? If you're interested in living longer and living stronger, let's have a chat. My name is Dom McStraw. Monday rant over.